what we got up to last time was we didn't quite finish the shirt so we'll look at finishing the back before we do anything go up to window workspace uh, reset your workspace okay so we just need to copy reflect the back get your black selection tool or press D on the keypad select over the image press O next to P hold down option click on the center line choose vertical and copy all right so we're going to join all center back lines with the join tool if you don't have the join tool you can use the white selection tool and drag a small marquee over the two endpoints and press command J but it is preferable to use the join tool because you only end up with one um, point on a corner uh, now we're just going to check that we have shapes because the next part we need shapes for all our objects so sleeve cuff bodice then we have our front so we've got our front shape our bottom shape our sleeve our cuff our collar our back neck so I don't think I got you to make the back neck as a shape so I'll show you how to do that and we need it later for another uh, for the grey back area so what we're going to do hold down shift select the back neck the front collar the other front collar now hold down option or alt and drag away now we're going to zoom in Z on your keypad zoom in scissors or cut C and cut on the corner cut center front cut on the other corner cut center front the reason we've lost our image is because we have a white fill so we're just going to select everything of that collar and make sure there's no fill now we can see everything now we want to delete that bit that we cut and we want to join this piece so uh, we will get our join tool or I'll show you how to use the white selection tool drag a little marquee over the corners command J command J command J and now we come to our color boxes and we flip so we get a black shape we go to our transparency panel and make it 25% so 25% is good for black and white images. If, say, later on you're making a coloured image and you don't want um, it to have... Uh, sorry, I just realised we made the grey shape. We didn't really want that, but anyway, for later on. Uh, if you've got a patterned garment, you might need to make this a darker um, shade or even a different colour transparency. All right, so we'll save that because we'll need it later. Copy it, option drag or alt drag, flip it back to an outline, go back to transparency, make it 100. Okay, and see what's happening here? We're getting a weird, that's because of the double points. Uh, another way we can hide that is go to our stroke panel, show options and choose a round corner so if you've ever got any sort of pointy bits that look really ugly uh, just put a round corner on it and we're going to go back to default color which is D on the keypad um, oh, let's go back okay need to click back on the corner again so that now has a white fill uh, we're going to move that back over our image our shirt and now because it has a white fill it's covering up that back line of the back neck shift command back bracket or right click send back arrange send back okay upboard uh, icon that's over here or it's shift plus O and drag your artboard out you can make the artboard any size you like but the idea is that if you want to print it has to be A4 okay so we're going to copy that top, copy the top, uh, the front, so hold down optional alt and drag, 
move it to the left hand side and delete all the internal detail. So um, we will have to maybe zoom in a bit, get our group selection tool, hold down shift, click on all the things that you don't want because we're making a shape out of it so that we can do these different techniques. And we're getting rid of all of these things and the back neck line as well, press delete twice uh, to make sure it's all gone. So technically you should be able to um, use the front image shape for the back image if you've made it perfectly but just um, it is actually easier to redo the back view if it doesn't um, fit properly because it just takes so long trying to get it to fit. Okay, select everything. We're going to copy that because we'll do two different techniques. So um, the first technique is called, uh, so we have to make sure everything has a white fill. So just press D on the keypad after you've selected everything, press D on the keypad. Um, zoom in a bit so you can see the whole top. Remember hold the space bar to move your image around. Go to your shape builder tool which is this one with the two circles and the arrow and click and drag through all the different shapes. It doesn't always work 100% but we'll see how we go. Yeah. Um, we could give it another go, see if that gets rid of this. So you can keep clicking over it, selecting the bits that you don't want. There we go. And that'll probably do for that one. You can then come through and select different parts of it. Uh, so now we do have a shape. The other option is that you do draw your garment with a complete outline. But this is in, with tops, normally we make different shapes. Make sure your shape has a white fill because we just added that back neck to it. It can actually mean that it's gone back to just black stroke. Hold down Option or Alt and copy this a few times. Now, what we're going to do is do a few different techniques with this outline. Zoom in, make sure there aren't any bits. Okay, the other thing you can do at this point is deselect everything, go up to Select, Object, Stray Points, and if there are any, they will highlight. So I haven't got any. Zoom back in. So this is called um, Drop Shadow, this particular one. Come up to Effect, come down to Stylize, choose Drop Shadow. And in the notes I've put in this formula. But you can do things like double click in colour and choose a different colour. You can. Um, get rid of the blur so that it's a hard line. You can move your shapes around. So there's all sorts of things in there. You can choose multiply or normal or uh, soft light. It's not really making any difference, but um, probably normal is the normal one. And most um, drop shadows are actually a soft blur, but I'll just leave that like that. The next one is thick outline. So you initially work on in the appearance panel. That's over here on the right. I might just reset my workspace. There we go. These back in. So um, actually, I don't want those. So I want. I think I'll just go back to classic, Essentials Classic. <laughs> okay, get rid of all that stuff. Don't need Pathfinder anymore. All right, 
so we're going to the appearance panel which is this icon over here that looks like the sun or if all your panels are under window so you could just find it under window so stroke what we're going to do is thicken the stroke so we click in that uh, field and we got two points and we drag that under fill it won't let us do it, it used to, but it's changed. So we're just going to drag, drag fill above the stroke. And what that means is that when you put this behind your trade sketch, the black outline will go beyond the sketch, not sort of internally inside the sketch. So it will make the image look, um, have a thicker outline. This means that you don't have to change any of your internal detail different stroke weights for all your seams and darts and all that sort of thing. Now on our um, drop shadow we're going to get rid of the black outline, I forgot to mention that, so you don't want a black outline on that. And what we're going to do now is go to our graphic styles, that's normally in the same panel as appearance, if you can't see it go up to window, graphic styles. So we'll select the drop shadow you can either click on the plus icon next to the bin in the panel or click on the list and go new graphic style. Normally you name it, so you call it drop shadow and go OK. So now that's in the um, panel here, so anytime you want to select a shape you can just click on the different um, graphic styles so to apply it to all images so I'm just going to undo that and this thick outline we're also going to make into a graphic style and we'll call it thick outline and go OK. So what we will do with these is select our top and copy it just get rid of that select the top Hold down Option or Alt, drag it over and sit it on top. Hold down Option, drag it down to your thick outline, sit it on top. See how that makes it a thick outline? And a drop shadow. So those, there's those two exercises. They're on page two of the notes. Uh, I'm just going to make my artboard a bit bigger, drag that out. What we're going to do now is make our lines for a spec sheet. So we just need to draw a line in our uh, swatches. We want to make sure we've got no fill and that our stroke is red. And then we get our pen tool. So we just press P on the keypad. Doesn't matter how long the line is. It's more about the um, ends on it. So uh, we make a five width, weight, and copy that four times, hold down Option or Alt and drag and so select the first line and if you can't see all this information in the stroke panel click on the list and go show options so down here where it says arrowheads the first one uh, on the right just click the first arrow, I find this the best one for um, spec sheets uh, click on the left hand side arrowhead Press the first one. The third line we're going to make double ended arrowheads so we need to click on the left and the right. And the fourth one we're going to choose arrowhead number 27 which is a flat end so that's good for and we need both sides for that one. So that's good for lengths and things like that. So we will turn those into graphic styles. Uh, Get the graphic styles panel open again and so select the first one click on new oh okay um, if you just click on new it will automatically put it in the panel if you select it click on the list and go new graphic style you can name it so we'll say left arrow uh, Okay, see I've already made it, won't let me make another one. Anyway, that's the idea. This one's called Double Arrow and this one's called um, Butt End or Flat End Arrow. But Blunt Ends, there you go. 
Uh, so you add all those to your panel and the next step we're going to do is make all the lines for our trade sketch that we would use for a spec sheet for measuring a garment. So select your top, check that you have everything, hold down option, drag. So this will be our top. So you draw a line. So if you click on one side, hold down shift and click to the other side, that will give you um, a straight line. We can move it up so it looks exactly the same distance as these two. If it's a bit big, we can squish it in. That's normally easier to do with the black selection tool and just sort of push in those ends. Then, um, something like the collar, the best way to do this is to well, we'll select both sides. We'll come up to Object, come down to Path. And so this is called um, path, offset path. And what we've got, it depends on whether you're set up for points or millimetres. It's either um, 0 0.5 millimetres or minus two points. And you click OK. And so then we need to cut it. So we cut here and here. Same on the other side, here and here. Then we select the top parts, hold down shift to collect more than one thing, delete, get your white selection tool and drag up to that corner. Keep it, keep this um, guide lined up so you don't go off centre. Come up to here, come up to here. Slightly off. It'll always sort of move around a little bit, which has been annoying. Anyway, that should be okay. Um, so that's one way you can do it. That's good for things like um, you may as well do it on the cuff as well. And if you can see any gaps, you may as well fix those up while you're there, which this was a bit far away from this, which is a seam. Okay, so we'll select our cuff. And our other cuff, hold down shift and object, path, offset path, same, okay. And this time we cut there, there, delete, there and there. And it doesn't always select the path you want to delete, unfortunately. So we'll drag this to the end, to the end. To the end and to the end. Come over to here, cut, 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 cut. Select both sides because if you think of a cuff, it's a strip, so your stitching will be only going around the top edge and bottom edge. You won't see it on the side, although you will on the back where the opening is. You can use your keypad arrows as well if something's being a bit tricky like that. Okay, um, I would say for the bottom of our garment, if we click on our center point, command copy and command F, paste in front, move that up. So one of these lines will be your uh, actual seam or fold over for your hem and hold down option, drag it under one will be for an overlock stitch. There you go. Um, we can always move these, but probably about there's right. And we might need to cut this one. So we'll just cut that point there, delete, cut that point. Oops, cut the hem, don't cut the hem. Cut there. And also our other one is proving a bit problematic. If you want to get rid of something and you can't see it, which often happens when you're doing this technique, uh, you go Command Y or Control Y and then you can see the path. So it's called Outline when you do this. 
Uh, we're just going to cut this path here and here and delete the ends so that they pop out the side there. Command Y. There we go. So they're all done. Now our um, placket. Next path. Offset path. And we'll stick with offset path. Go OK. And that way we know that all our um, stitching for areas like this is actually the same. So you don't have to think too much about whether you've got the right distance around your edges. So there is no stitching um, at the top. We'll drag that up to that seam of the, uh, come down to the bottom, cut it, cut, cut, delete, and black selection tools, hold down shift, select both paths, drag it down to the hem. And the last thing we need is our bottom hem. So we'll click on our hemline, make sure it's the hemline and not the placket. Command copy, Command F, paste in front. One, two, three. And this will sometimes happen where um, only one side copies and also it's sitting at the back so I'm going to bring it to the front shift command forward bracket it's got a white fill again I don't know how this has happened so we'll just check everything right at the end that we don't have white fills if that happens just copy the other side command copy command F paste in front one two three four five and bring it to the front so command zero have a look at all our stitch lines, check that we've got everything. Now we're just going to select everything on our shirt and we're going to say no fill. Okay, we might have to go to swatches to make this happen. There we go. If it won't let you do it in the colour boxes, go to swatches and do it. Alright, so, you know, a lot of these lines are confusing and you think I'll know what's happened but um, when we're finished now is come back select all the paths that we do want a white fill so that's all your main shapes and the back neck as well and we'll say default colour there you go simple as that uh, we will select everything again and in our stroke panel go around corner. There you go, so there's no ugly pointy corners sticking out. Now, what we have to do in our stroke panel is um, let's get rid of this, is uh, make a dashed line. So we'll select one path, we'll click on uh, weight which we want at 0.5 dash and so all we need to do is put two in the dash box one in the gap and we can delete all the others we don't need those and we need to click the where it says dash line the far right box and what that does is it gives you nice corners so there's our uh, stitch line what we do is we select all the other stitch lines that will be the same. Hold down shift, click over those lines. I think that's oh, this one. Um, and then we get our eyedropper tool, we'll press I on the keypad and click over that path. Done. This is the quickest way to do something like that. The other paths that have stitches are the pin stitch lines. So they're all on the collar stand and so they are 0.5 and dashed except this time they're one point dash, one point gap. Okay. And we're going to put an overlock stitch on the back here. So I've given you a spare uh, or a file I should say uh, in the download folder. CAD 2, underscore 104, pattern brush exercise. 
double click on the pattern brush exercise. Um, we're just going to grab the example and this is correct, the missing bits are fine, don't worry about it. Command copy, come back to your shirt, zoom right in on the hem, Command V, paste, rid of the colour in the bounding box. This is just so that you know it's um, there. And so we get rid of the colour. And what that does is it tells us what the repeat is. Um, I have made it correctly so that everything's okay with it. Select all of it. Um, also in stroke, we need to make it 0.25. So quite delicate. Um, hold down shift and scale it so that you can see how it will, how big it'll be on that path. That looks all right. So we go over, oh we go window brushes, we find our brush panel. I think it's behind here. Oops, yeah here it is. Uh, in the brushes panel you click on the list at the right, you go new brush and we nearly always make pattern brushes, so click on pattern brush, OK. And that's pretty weird, cancel. Oh, I think I've got the wrong thing selected. OK, I'm just going to go new brush, make sure it's selected properly, pattern brush, OK. There we go, that's better. Call it overlock. Um, we've got auto centered on that corner and the third box we want auto centered as well. We choose flip along, stretch to fit, colorization method, we choose hue shift, just in case you ever want to color it. Go OK, move this out of the way. So uh, all you have to do now is select your path and then click in the brushes. Your brush will be the last brush made. There we go. And there it is. Sometimes it might look too thick. Um, you can reduce the, the size, although it will reduce the actual width of the brush as well. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe that looks a bit better than the other one. Um, you can move it around. It might look a bit small. I think I'll go back to one. Okay, so there you go. That's your pattern brush. You can then save this actual icon and put it in your brushes file that we made in semester one. Our paths for our spec sheet so we will copy our top command. Actually, we'll use the one we made with all the stitching on it. Move this out of the way. Select this top. Uh, copy it. Command, oh, sorry, Option or Alt, drag. Just move that out of the way. So, this is our top for. Uh, our spec sheet. It's probably easier to look at the notes and see where I've made the paths. So um, most of these what we'll be doing is clicking on the path and copy pasting it in front. Hold down shift so if there's more than two points that one at both ends, say this point here, hold down shift and go command copy command F and that way it copies the whole path. Oops. Um, okay. Command copy, command F, one, two, three. Now, the reason we can't see it is because it has a white fill. Um, one, two, three. So I've clicked it out six times, that one. So I will do that for everything. Or probably five is probably better. Command C, command F, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think five. You don't want the path so far away from the image that it's a bit hard to associate it with it. So it's close, but it's not too close. So about five clicks 
of the um, arrow should do it. Um, white selection tool or A, I'm going to do this side seam. I'm just going to click shift and click on all the points on that side seam just to make sure they all copy. Command copy, Command F, click, click, click. Again, I've got a white fill. Three, four, five. There we go. And so I might cut this one while I'm there. When you cut them, you want to cut so that there's a little bit extra um, on the end for a little bit of space on the end for the actual arrowhead. So it's that sort of idea. Um, probably, yeah, the front we need one. Command copy, Command F for the length of the um, placket. Um, darts. Not necessarily shoulder you do. Command copy, command F, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to cut that one while I'm there. Select the bit I don't want. I have to zoom in. So I guess the golden rule is zoom in. Otherwise you might delete the bit you do want. Now um, normally with something like a collar you want the whole collar. So you might use a, well you would use an ellipse. So we're just going to click and drag uh, so that we have an ellipse that will go all the way around. I'm just going to squish it off so it doesn't take up too much space above the image. And so I will cut it um, there and there and delete that bit. So you're trying to cut it evenly either side. Um, doesn't matter if it's slightly off but if it's quite uneven it'll look a bit ugly. Um, now what else do we need? Probably need the um, circumference of the armhole. So again that would be an ellipse. So you would move that so that it's that same distance either side and then hover over a corner to get your, your curve and when you're looking at this you're trying to line up same distance through here so armhole and ellipse oh. near enough now um, we want to see I might move it a bit out like that. So again, looking at this distance, we want to keep that distance fairly similar. And having done that now, I realise it's a little bit off. There we go. Oh, anyway, could be there all day doing that. So cut, um, so it's going behind the sleeve. Delete that bit. And then we're going to have our arrowheads sort of meeting on that front like that. And I'll probably want cuff length, so I'm just going to chop that end off there. I'm going to chop the end off here. Going to copy the path. Getting that angle of the um, cuff is quite difficult, so that's where you copy the path. Command copy, command paste in front. One, two, three, four, five. Cut the end. And uh, just move it down a bit. One, two, three, four. Up. And there we go. Up. And I'm just noticing I've got white in all my paths, so I'm going to have to fix that up right at the end. Uh, another ellipse for the circumference of the, the hem so that'll be sitting behind the garment so we don't want to confuse the front here so line always line up with the center line of things maybe a little bit less remembering our distance here maybe a little bit more for the hem there cut it 
where it intersects at the side seam, center front. Get rid of the back. Now this part sort of getting in the way a bit here. I'll cut that a bit shorter, I think. All right, so that's that one. Um, and that's it if, if, you know, it's all getting a bit crowded, like I want the circumference of the cuff this side, so I'll make it on this side rather than try and squish it on that side. Angle it to the cuff. Bring it up. You can also sort of push it against the cuff like that to check that you've got the right angle on it. Okay. Um, cut it so it's hidden behind the cuff and a little gap in the front. Okay. Delete. Um, I've got an awful lot of lines, haven't I? So I've got a line between the buttons um, and I've also got, a, so I'm holding down shift then, P to deselect, P, shift, click just above the hem because the distance from the last bu button to the hem is longer than between the buttons. Uh, collar width. So this collar, command copy, command F, paste in front, move that one, two, three, four, five. So might move it a little bit further out because it's uh, going to get in the way there. Cut. Oops. Cut. Ah, going to get it right on the line. Oh, you're not letting me. Okay. Black selection, squish it in. <laughs> uh, and now it's crooked. All right. Zoom in. Sometimes you just got to zoom in. Uh, white selection tool, copy, command, copy, command F. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think on that one. Cut. Cut. There we go. It's just because I wasn't zoomed in, it wouldn't let me. Okay, uh, last one is the full length. So full length would be we get our rectangle tool and we sort of work out where the top of our collar is, come out, click and drag to the bottom of our hem. Oh, it's not quite big enough, is it? Bring that up, get rid of the white fill. Okay, so we're going to cut um, cut it in. So we'll drag out a ruler so that we know we get it um, cut in the right spot. View guides, show guides if you can't see them. Now, cut, see, cut there. Oh, I just cut the ruler. Doesn't matter, I'll just cut the just on the other side of the ruler. There we go. And now I'm going to delete the ruler because I don't need it. Delete the end there. All right, so we've got all our paths. All we need now is our graphic styles. So window, graphic styles, bring them up. So this one, uh, double-ended arrow, double-end arrow. Uh, what else? Double end arrow. So you can even hold down shift and just choose um, whether you want a double end arrow or a blunt end. We'll put a double end on those. This one's a double end. Uh, this one, because it's broken, will need um, an arrow one side and an arrow the other side. And, Sometimes you get it wrong, you have the arrow going the wrong way, you just need to choose the other one. Um, so something like that one, that one, shoulder, these little guys in here, and the length of the, actually I might make the placket an arrow end. Those ones I want a blunt end, I think. Uh, this one I'm gonna choose 
and just make sure that's sitting at the front as well and that's double ended arrow so this one is one arrow two arrows same one it's going the wrong way yep two and so I think that's everything zoom in check so you can see how quickly you can get things done by having these as graphic styles um, you know if I look at this it's sort of sitting in a little bit close so I could even straighten that out a little bit so it's not so close to the garment oh missed one front end okay caps um, Type tool, so caps on uh, A space B space C D E F G H I J K L M N. There we go. Uh, select all of them by clicking on the black selection tool. Come to your swatches, choose red. Also, our font, if you're on a Mac, it always goes to Myriad Pro, which is quite a nice font, but um, just to be safe for Windows users, we'll choose Arial. Um, we'll make the size of it about um, 8. Yeah, that should be alright. So we've got our letters. Uh, what we do now is we come up to make sure they're selected. Come up to Object. Come down to Expand. Um, Make sure object and filler selected, go OK, and then go object ungroup. And so now we can move our letters independently, and it doesn't matter where you put them, but you know, try and put them about the same distance away from your paths. Normally, you put them in the center of a path, but say somewhere like here, you might. Put it at the top. It's just so they're easily read, really. Okay. Uh, 